Welcome back to the channel. This video is the follow-up to DIY number nine, which detailed the engineering principles and design of an air dryer for a compressor system. If you have not watched this that video, you need to do so now. The link is in the description below. The purpose of this design was to fabricate an air dryer system that would match or exceed the typical air refrigeration dryer systems that are available. The goal was to reduce both the initial capital and operating costs. In order to do that, the system would have to be primarily passive. So let's go out to the garage and see what fabrication was required to make this system happen. Okay, we're out in the garage and we're going to be taking a look now at uh, what this thing finally looks like. Uh, I'm going to talk about the general components of it and then we'll go talk about the specific components uh, in detail. First of all, we come off the compressor and we move it into a flex line, which we, we bring into the uh, cooler and it cools air temperature down and then it comes back out and it comes down into a condenser coil inside there and then goes down to a water trap and then back up into the main tank and then from the main tank it comes out back into another condenser coil and then down into another water trap and out to our our line. So let's talk about some of the details here. Okay, <clears throat> this is a 3 8 inch OD. It's about 0.274 ID. And anyway, we put a rigid structure on here to keep this thing from vibrating and, and failing. And then we go into a flexible hose. And this hose has a, uh, it's got a Teflon intercooler and it's good to 300 degrees which is about what the exhaust temperature is. And then we come into the cooling coil. Now, uh, we have a fan pushing air through and a fan pulling air out of it. And these two plenums are pretty much airtight. And so what this does is that uh, these two fans come on when the uh, compressor turns on and uh, there we get a very even flow of air across the entire uh, cross section of this uh, cooler and it's very very efficient now as you can see here we've got this tied here so the vibrations will not show up into either one of these uh, inlet and exhaust because if you got any vibrations they're going to fail and I'll show you a quick uh, video of uh, what happens when that uh, when that occurs update on the air compressor air dryer air cooler system these are one of the updates I don't like to provide but I want to make sure in full disclosure you can see my failures as well as my successes so this system has been functioning perfectly for about two months maybe light to moderate use so far uh, but here is the failure up here right there so where the tubing went into the air cooler that failed you can see there so definitely disappointing. I could hear it kind of running there uh, from the shop. I could hear it coming. Okay, we're out in the garage, and we're going to be looking at how some guys uh, on the internet have chosen to mount their uh, pre-cooler heater, which is in front of the uh, fan or the pump. And you can see there's about a gap of one inch between the cooling radiators and the pulley. Now this is an extremely inefficient way of doing that because <clears throat> there's a lot of resistance for the air going through this and so as it creates a partial vacuum of the uh, fan wheel instead of pulling air through here it just comes through the gap around here leaving this coil probably only operating at probably 10% of its capacity. This is not what you want to do. Now, there's another problem with this orientation where you see they, they, they bring the outputs down. What, what, this is uh, really bad in that you see these loops 
Well, these loops will fill up with water and they have no way to drain out. So you never want to put it in this orientation. You always want to rotate it 90 degrees and then an additional 45 degrees. And we'll talk about that, uh, why you want to do that in just a minute. Okay, we're back out in the garage. And we want to talk about the proper orientation of your heat exchanger. You want to have it where these two exhausts are parallel to the, your surface. Now, you can see that if we mount it vertically, which most of the guys on the internet do, you've got, if water condenses in this line, right, where does it go? Because it comes here and goes up here. So it's not going to exit at this end. If it comes down here, it's got to go up to exit, which means it can't exit, which means it's going to collect in this line until eventually it gets enough water to reach up here and maybe some air pressure to force that out. So you've got a lot of residual water that's going to collect in this uh, <clears throat> radiator if you operate it in the vertical position. So if, if we look at the angle of these pipes, we'll notice that they're at 45 degrees. So now if we take this thing and we rotate it 45 degrees where these are level, then what we find out is these two tubes, as they run all the way through there, are perfectly level. So as fluid or water condensates and builds up, if you follow this tube up here, it goes uphill. Well, it's not going to flow uphill, right? So it's going to, if we follow this one back here, we'll see that it then goes downhill. So by mount, mounting it in the 45 degree position, as we collect water, the water will automatically, just by gravity, drain itself out. But if you put it up like this, you're going to have a whole bunch of condensated water that can't go anywhere by gravity and it's going to have to be forced along by uh, the airflow, which is not what you want to do. And then we come out and again we isolate it so we don't get any vibration again cause a stress crash here. And then <clears throat> you need to orientate this uh, cooler at 45 degrees and I'll show you a quick video on why you need to do that. That's just to make sure that the water drains out by gravity. And then, so we're going to be getting some water here and it's going to be air and water coming down into the uh, condenser. Now this condenser is a two inch ID steel pipe that is uh, galvanized. It's important that you galvanize it because it's going to be constantly full of water and you don't want rust. Now both of these uh, condensers are full of copper Brillo pads and I'll uh, flash up a uh, picture that so that you can see. Now that the importance of that is uh, the air velocity that's coming in here, right, is the same as coming out of the compressor, right? And whatever that velocity is, this volume increase here, or excuse me, the cross-sectional increase, it's such that whatever that, vi whatever that uh, velocity is, it's going to be one-fifth once it goes into this. So it's going to, the air is going to come in here and it's going to turn very, very slow as it goes through, one-fifth of this or one fiftieth of this velocity, so we get real good dwell time, and it's flowing through those copper Brillo pads, and so the the water that's coming out of solution out of the air has lots of surface for it to condense on, and so this this thing basically fills up with water. It just beads on the side, it beads on the uh, the copper things, and then once the beads of water get big enough, right to overcome the surface tension of the water, then it'll start cascading or essentially raining 
down to the bottom and then collect down into the uh, water trap. And the same thing occurs uh, when it comes out here for the final uh, condenser. Only we pick up uh, some better stuff when it comes out because when we're, when we're coming out of a tank of between 110 and 150 and I'm deregulating this down to 80, what we do is we're getting that adiabatic cooling. So this air gets about oh, up to maybe in some cases 30 degrees lower than the temperature of the air in the tank and that gives us a higher dew point spread so it comes in here and it, it it's got that long dwell time and the dew point spread the temperature gradient is much higher so we get a lot of condensation out of both of these and so by the time it comes out the end down there we have some very very dry air disclaimer this video is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as professional engineering advice. Pressurized systems are inherently dangerous if not constructed properly. Seek professional help if you do not know what you are doing. Thanks for watching.